Mr. Ramos Horton's comments on the situation in East Timor attracted only a small audience, though among them were some familiar faces from the Labour movement. It's the rank and file of the Labour Party that Mr. Horton is trying to appeal to during his Australian visit, which will take in the ALP National Conference next month. He is the UN representative of Fretland, the East Timorese rebel group, and has first-hand experience of the situation there. Mr. Ramos Horta says former Prime Minister Gough Whitlam and the Foreign Affairs Department hoped criticism of the 1975 invasion by Indonesia would fade away. However, the issue of East Timor will not go away. This has been going on for nine years. It will continue to have the conscience of those in Australia, particularly who for several years has connived in the mass killing in an island in a territory 364 miles north of Darwin. Reacting to the that announcement that a proposed ago, Australian fact-finding mission to East Timor was cancelled by Indonesia without explanation, Mr. Ramos Horta had this to say. The visit was cancelled simply for military reasons in East Timor. The Indonesians were launching another offensive involving 14,000 troops and they did not want the Australian uh, diplomatic delegation in the territory while the offensive, the operation was going on. That's the only reason. of live theatre in Newcastle over the past two weeks with no fewer than eight shows opening but the jewel in the crown has to be the Australian ballet production of La Fille Malgarde which is subtitled Lock Up Your Daughter on at the Civic Theatre until Saturday night. Well there are a lot of wonderful things happening with the Australian ballet. First it's their first appearance in Newcastle since 1977 when they performed the Merry Widow. Next the first night audience was privileged to see FC Castle dancer Therese Power dancing the lead role of Lisa, which she will repeat on Saturday night. And there was the added bonus of the Elizabethan Melbourne Orchestra. So often when the ballet comes to Newcastle, audiences have to be content with taste music. For the first night, we received a rapturous welcome from an almost competitive crowd. Let's take some of those audience members after the performance. What did you think of the show? Oh, sorry, sorry. What did you think of the show? I love it. I did a live concert. Oh, I enjoyed it very much, thank you very much. Okay. I like it, it's good. The leader of the Australian Democrats, whose party holds the balance of power in the Senate, was in fine form. Mitri Ollick well, made comments on general parliamentary behaviour. A football club wouldn't condone such behaviour. Highly critical of the Liberals in opposition. Mindless opposition to all legislation, according to the Senator. And he named December the 1st as a certainty the date of the next federal election, when he predicted another Hawke government landslide. But on more vital issues, the Senatorship sees them the message was, if the bomb doesn't get you, the silicon chip will. Five to After the threat of nuclear war, he was a member of the Council of the, the City of new technology is something which requires immediate action by government, unions and employers. We knew it was going to hit ten years ago. We did nothing about it then. It's going to get worse in the next five or six years. We're doing nothing about it now. And that is the technical explosion. Now, what we're 
the thing caused by that little object half the size of the fingernail on my little finger, the silicon chip. There's not a person in this room doesn't know it's going to be devastating in the loss of jobs in this country in the next decade. Every sociologist, every economist, every person to investigate the problem is unanimous on this point. Yet we still look at our unemployment figures and try to blame some treasurer or some government or some party without knowing that there is, as sure as night follows day, a flux towards the situation in Sicily. We put a lot of stress on the security of the nation, a lot of stress on uh, building up again the ANZUS relationship, and here's a difference between us and the government. In recent statements, Mr Hayden has tended to narrow down his interpretation of ANZUS. That doesn't coincide with either the United States point of view or our point of view. Uh, the government is running into trouble because of its uh, mad left in relation to its policies towards Vietnam's occupation of Cambodia. We say that we should develop uh, our strong relationships with ASEAN and support them in their position, which is to try and secure the uh, withdrawal of Vietnamese forces from Cambodia. We see again the Prime Minister's plans coming unstuck. Uh, again, his party policy requires him to take a particular attitude towards East Timor. He's tried to paper that over over the last 15 months. Again, we see that coming unstuck at the moment. We believe that the government's performance, rather than its rhetoric, has led to a diminished uh, respect for Australia in the region. It's led to, sus to suspicion and distrust. We'd reverse that because we did build up a great deal of trust uh, between Australia and its close neighbours over those years in government. Theatrical artists are amongst the audiences of the audience with this special wish to this day. It's called Awareness Week, and a large number of displays and activities have been organised by the Life Without Barriers Foundation. Foundation members, Mr. Andrew Buchanan from the ABC, and ABC chairman, Mr. John Pesha, stress the importance of bringing the general public and the disabled closer together. A practical demonstration of that barrier breaking will be held at Garden City on Thursday night when some disabled people will put on a show for the public. Their performance is being coordinated by Mr. Aldo Gennaro, the Chilean-born artist behind the controversial movie on the disabled called Stepping Out. One of the highlights of the week will be performances by a group of disabled puppets called Kids on the Street. One of those puppets is Mark Ryrie. Mark, could you tell me, why are you in a wheelchair? Oh, I've got cerebral palsy. And that means that I can't use my legs properly. And what exactly are you doing at Garden City? Why are you putting on these shows? Well, me and my friend Peter. Hello. And another friend called Susan Hello. are down here to talk about people with disabilities so that mums and dads and kids can find out all about people with disabilities. began yesterday afternoon in Garden City and will end on Sunday with the Mardi Gras in Civic Park. MPN's chairman, Mr John Peshar, officially opened the Awareness Week before an audience of welfare workers, mentally handicapped people and theatrical performers. An impressive variety of activities will be held during the week, mostly centering on the shopping centre. Almost every organisation with some special interest in the welfare of the handicapped will be represented. 
at the moment. A good example is the independent living centre of New South Wales, which has travelled up from Sydney for the week. The organisation is dedicated to providing the handicapped and their families with free information and demonstration of aid and equipment. One of the highlights of the week will be performances by a group of disabled puppets called Kids on the Street. One of those puppets is Mark Riley. Mark, could you tell me, why are you in a wheelchair? Oh, I've got cerebral palsy and that means that I can't use my legs properly. And what exactly are you doing at Garden City? Why are you putting on these shows? Well, me and my friend Peter Hello. and another friend called Susan Hello, are down Susan. here to talk about people with disabilities so that mums and dads and kids can find out all about people with disabilities. Yeah, yeah. just like you said. What, what's your ambition? Oh, I want to be a rap dancer. What like my mate Peter. That's me. Yeah. I'm going to invent rap dancing for wheelchairs. The performers behind the puppets are members of the Ship of Fools clown troupe and their project is being sponsored by the Education Department. Vying with the puppets for attention will be disabled people from the New Deal Association who will perform a play in Garden City on Thursday night. Their show will be coordinated by Mr. Aldo Gennaro, the Chilean-born artist behind a controversial movie on the disabled called Stepping Out. Aldo, why are you trying to put together this performance with disabled people? Uh, first and all, because disabled people have enormous skills in communicating through movement, drama, dance and art. And secondly, because art is a wonderful medium of integrate minority group with a large stream of society. statement about the renewal, it's always been one of basic approval, with some caution perhaps, but uh, essentially saying this is perfectly compatible with our Catholic faith. Do you think charismatics cope better with 20th century life because of their faith? Oh, very much. I think that's an exactly what gives the sense of the charismatic renewal, uh, that the Holy Spirit does give us help to cope with things. And again and again, there are stories of people who tell how they were at the at the breaking point, they were pushed to the limit, they didn't know how they were going to cope, when uh, the Holy Spirit coming into their life gave them the strength and the joy, whatever it was that they needed to carry on, that, that's for sure. the HNREA recommendation to lift the bans has been greeted with scepticism in the local sub-branches. Stockton Hospital members are particularly angry with the recommendation and will continue their bans until they receive assurances from the state government that the 38-hour week will be granted to them. This morning I rang our Sydney officials. I was told that long negotiations at the weekend that um, public hospitals would be given it was a formality that the public hospital would be given a 38-hour week, but shift schedule and ambulance would be a flow on. I was just going to say, surely it is just a formality that you are going to get that 38-hour week as a flow on. It is, Mark, but for me to stand up in front of 350 people and say, you've reimposed your demands, 
you will get a 38 hour week as a flow on. The first question that will come back to me is when? Do you think the government might try to delay the introduction of that 38 hour week as long as possible? I think so, definitely, yeah. And I think even to give it to public hospitals, it'll still be quite a while before it is reintroduced or before it is introduced to any uh, sector of the health industry. There's other people who are running and jumping and uh, those type of things, and it's not really that difficult now. What sort of benefits are there for these people by participating in sports? Well, the benefits are that uh, then it's a competition, I suppose. They're, they're out there to compete with uh, one with another, and it's uh, and they love it. Even any sort of competition, they they really uh, enjoy. The results of today's competition will be used to select a team to represent the region in the Endeavour Games to be held in Brisbane in September. Last year's team proved to be a fine ambassador for the region, bringing back six gold and five silver medals. Tomorrow and Sunday's race will uh, have Commonwealth Games medalists. Um, Australian, former Australian road champions and um, silver uh, medalists from the Commonwealth and Olympic Games. It's certainly a top field and it's been very well organised. What do you think attracts such a strong field? Well, it's, it's more or less the, uh, the prize money. I'm not too sure on how much has been allocated for the race, but uh, it's also it's the most gruelling race and it sets up riders for um, bigger events later on in the season, you know, including the Grass and River, which has run over 142 miles. Wayne, on the organisational aspect, you've done it very well. You've got police escorts, I believe. Yeah, we've got police escorts for two days. Uh, it's the first time we've ever had that for the whole whole of the tour. The um, police will be uh, more or less controlling the race through town to town and uh, make sure there's no incidents with traffic whatsoever. And finally, have we got a local cyclist who must be among the favourites? I'd say there'd be three, Anthony Chapman, David Perry and Nigel Perry. They're both the three of them all represented New South Wales on a number of occasions. And
is important. Um, we are trying to promote the code here in Newcastle, and I think the fact that Newcastle are successful um, will do a lot for Australian football in, in the Newcastle area. They're playing Curtin Razor to the Swans game, which is obviously near the top of the VFL in Australia. What is the standard to say the spectators can expect to see from these two top country sides? I think they can expect an excellent standard. Uh, we we here have some very good footballers in Newcastle, and uh, uh, when they're all put together in one team, uh, they produce a pretty good side, and I think a side that's good enough to win on uh, on Sunday.